Hi. Hello. Hi, Gabriela. Hi. How are you? I am good. I'm okay. Very good. Ajá, señorita. Y no se ha cambiado el nombre todavía, Maribel. I can't hear you, Maribel. Hi. Hi. How are you? No, I'm fine. Fine, fine. What I happened really... yesterday? Oh, I was doing uh, the, the, ay, the declaración de renta, ¿cómo se dice? The taxes. You were uh -huh. the tax. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I was finishing some. Ah, okay. I am an accountant. Right, so, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ah, uh -huh. very good. I am so sorry, but I couldn't be here. That's okay. We missed you, though. Very good. Uh -huh. I'm glad you're here with us tonight. All right, Gabriela, how was your day today, Gabriela? That's fine, thank you. Yeah, all right. Do you I'm have home? You, you stay home? Yes. Ah, okay, that's good. All right. Yes. What about uh, Maribel? Do you go home? Do you stay home or you go to work? Oh, I'm sorry. Repeat, please. Yeah, like right now, because of the whole situation, do you stay home or you have to go to, like, do you work? No, I stay home. I am working here. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's better because that's safer. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. Okay. Very good. So today, girls, we're going to talk about the last type of uh, reading questions that we have to study here in this course, TOEFL 2. All right. And that's pretty much, as I said, we were going to finish the reading section this week. Hi, Freddy. All right, uh, so next week we're going to begin section two, all right, which is going to be the listening, all right? So today we're going to begin with the uh, insert questions. I don't know if you have been able to study the platform. Hi, Freddy. Hi, Saida. Welcome. Have you studied the platform for this uh, type of questions or not really? No, I haven't. You haven't? Okay, very good. What about you, Gabby? Have you done it, Gabriela? Side no. already? No? Good evening, teacher. Good no. Evening. Okay, uh, no. Okay, that's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. All right. Uh -huh. So that's why we're no, here. We are, teacher, we are at home and, and we are a little <laughs> bit lazy. I know. <laughs> no. But even I think that a lot of people that are working from home, they are busier than going yeah. to the office. All right, home. so it's very, yeah, home yes. office is very difficult, right? In case, yeah, in but home, home, yes, but home, yeah, but homework, how do you say official? Yeah, your house chores, yeah, of house, course, yeah, yeah, many, yeah. I know, you have to click, uh, oh, oh my god, I think <laughs> and you have to I cook and everything, uh -huh, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. What were you gonna say, Freddy? I'm sorry, hi, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, in these three days, I have gone to work. Yeah. All right. So I, I don't have enough time. Yeah, you to don't have enough time. Check the platform, but uh, in the weekend. Yeah, of course. On the weekend, you're yeah. going to do it. All right. Very good. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So as I said, we're going to uh, continue with the last type of question for the course. All right which are the insert questions. We're going to do a lot of reading tonight because I want to walk you through the theory of how these questions are built because I think they're very, it's very important for you to know, all right, what they are about, okay? So we're gonna, I have again the PPT, all right, which um, finishes, finishes the explanation that is on the platform, okay? So it's like, like a plus here, all right? So it's like, Nothing different, but it's more information, okay? So that can help you out. So I'm gonna share with you the presentation I have as every night, okay? So insert text questions. The, that's the name of these last type of questions for these course, all right? So remember that this is the very last topic of section one, the reading section, okay? So here we have, guys, it says, what's the aim? What, what is the aim for these questions? And it's simple. Okay, what they want you to do is they want to see if you have understood the logical order of ideas, okay? So in these questions, you're going to have a passage or a paragraph 
which the options are inside the paragraph, not outside the paragraph, okay? And what they want you to do is, at the end, they give you a sentence that is highlighted or bold, all right? And what they want you to do is to fit that sentence in one of the options, okay? To see if you have understood the order of the ideas. So it's a little bit not that easy. I mean, it's a little bit complex, okay? But we're gonna try to like, give you some tips so you guys know how to deal with those questions okay so as i said we're going to do a lot of reading tonight but i think it's necessary here so freddy do you mind reading please for me yes of course okay. well text insertion question give you a sentence not found in the passage and ask you to choose to choose no, to choose sorry to choose okay. where the, where the sentence full will fit best into the passage. All right, you so hold, hold on, Freddy, hold on. So, I'm sorry, uh, the sentence that we are being given is not on the passage, all right? It's like an extra sentence, and they wanna see if you know where to fit it in, all right? That's the whole purpose of this. Continue, Freddy, please. Usually, the new sentence will provide you with a clue as to where it should go. This can be a transition word that gives you an idea of how the new sentence relates to surrounding sentences. Or it may be a pronoun, including demonstrative like these or those. If it's the letter, mm -hmm. you can use a process similar to the one you might use to answer a reference question to decide first what the pronoun or demonstrative refers to. Yeah. That may help you to chose to choose, choose to help you choose the most logical place to put the new sentence all right very good let's continue here uh let me see what else i have here uh nidia can you keep on reading please good evening good evening even if you think you know the correct answer it's always a good idea to try the sentence in every possible location mm -hmm. You can insert and remove the sentence as many times as you need to by clicking on the squares that mark each possible location. All right. Before submitting your answer, be sure that the sentence follows logically from the preceding sentence and leads logically to the next sentence. Right. Okay. And that any pronoun agree with the nouns they should refer to right okay very good so here what they are saying is what the questions are looking for or what what the questions want you to look for all right most of the time or sometimes you're going to have a transition word but hidden on the passage all right so you have to like try to understand what they are really telling you on the extra sentence that you have all right so that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Let's go on here. See, this is how the sentence, I mean, the, the, the question would look like, okay? On the real TOEFL test, this is how the sentence or the passage in, like the question in the passage would look like, all right? So here we have understanding the organization of ideas, all right? Gabriela, do you mind reading this, please? Understanding the organization of ideas. One of the question types that you will encounter on the TOEFL test requires you to insert a sentence in the correct place in the past. Reference connecting words and surrounding words can help you identify where the identify? sentence fits best. Okay. A sentence can be one of the following three types. Okay. Continue, please. One, a general sentence that introduces the topic. That introduces the topic, uh-huh. A well written passage a well written a well, -written, a well -written, passage. written passage has a main idea called the topic. The topic is what the passage is about. The topic of the passage is usually started in the first sentence, although other positions are also possible. Mm -hmm. The sentences that state the topic is called the topic sentence. All right. If the sentence to be inserted in the topic sentence it will introduce the general topic of the passage and it will contain words that that relate to words in the first sentence of the passages. Read the passage 
passage below and the sentence to be inserted. All right, thank you, Gabriela. Thank you so much. So here they're gonna, uh, we're gonna walk you through three types of sentences that you may be uh, encountering with yourself with, okay? So the first one is a general sentence that introduces the topic, all right? Uh, let's go on here. Evelyn, can you keep on reading the Korean? Okay, letter A. That's right. The Korean, yes, that's right. Okay. The Korean word water kit is usually constructed of four or five sparse tied together in the center. B, the parts form the sparse? A, no, no, no. The sparse form a sturdy, sturdy? sturdy frame for a regular cover. A rectangular? Cover. A rectangular cover whose center is pierce. Pierce. Yes. By a yes. circular hole several inches in diameter. 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 See? The surface of the cover is often decorated with stripes and designs. Reminiscent of the sun. D. The this kite. kit, uh, this kite is especially sweet suited for suited. flying in suited for flying in okay. strong winds. Winds, winds. All right. Okay. Sorry. Now that's okay. Thank you, Evelyn. So if you notice, that is this, uh, that is the passage. All right. The passage begins at the Korean warrior and finishes with a strong winds. That is the passage that is given to you. Now, if you notice, we have the four choices within the passage. Choice A, choice B, choice C, B. And the sentence, the extra sentence that is not anywhere in the passage is at the bottom, which says kite design varies around the world. What we have to do is that we have to put like we have to imagine that we have to insert that sentence either on A or on B or on C or on D, all right? For us, I mean, we have to make sense of it, all right? So that's why we have to read it and say, okay, so where can this sentence belong to? Where can it go? Does it go like on A, on B, on C, or on D, all right? Uh, let me see here who else I have here. Saida, can you finish reading? Hi, Julia. Uh, can you finish reading where it says um, kite design varies around the world? Can you keep on reading now? They're going to give you the okay. answer right now. Mm -hmm. Kite design varies around the world. This sentence, sentence describes a general topic and could precede the sentence introducing the specific topic. The design of the Korean warrior kite. The sentences will log logically be the first sentences in the passage and will be inserted at A. A. All right. So, kite design varies around the world. The Korean warrior kite is usually constructed of or five, and then you go on. All right. So the extra sentence will go at the very beginning of your passage because it's a topic sentence. It's the intro sentence of your whole paragraph. Do you understand what they're talking about? Yes. Yeah, you understand how they are going to be structured and what they want you to do? Yes. Yeah, all right, very good. Let's go on here with the next one. Uh, that would be number. Uh, Maribel, can you start reading, please? A sentence. A sentence that gives details of a supporting idea within the passage. If the sentence to be inserted gives details of a supporting idea, it will probably contain transitions or connecting words. Additionally, it will often contain a word or phrase that refers to the supporting idea. Read the passage below and the sentence to be inserted. Thank you, Maribel. Okay, so now we're not looking for a topic sentence or an intro sentence. What we're looking for is, what are we looking for now, Freddy? Sorry? What are we looking for? for according to number two, what type of sentence are we like most likely to be looking for? 
uh, well, in this uh, section, we're looking that. for an idea that support the uh, main idea. All right, so we're looking for a to give you details, all right? Yeah of a supporting idea within the passage. That's what we're looking for, right? So on the first, uh, on number one, we were trying to look for a sentence that was like uh, the topic sentence, let's say, all right? In this case, we're not looking for a topic sentence. We're looking for a sentence that is going to give you details, all right? So let's go on here. Who wants to read the paragraph? Cheese is made. Who wants to read that one? Volunteers? Or I make someone read. Me again. <laughs> All right, Me yeah, again. go on, Maribel, go on. That's okay. Cheese is made from the third of milk. A. Although there are literally thousands of varieties. 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 Um, varieties. Varieties. Yes. Of varieties, which differ according to the method method of pre preparation yes. and quality of milk they can be divided into three main classes uh -huh. b soft cheeses are those with rings and very soft creamy centers of this brie brie i guess it's the and, name of a cheese i don't know <laughs> ah okay brie and cam cam camembert are perhaps the most famous 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 <laughs> famous <laughs> see blue vein of uh, cheeses have been injected with with a penicillin mold which created <laughs> which, wow, which created yeah. uh, the characteristic blue veins ah. the pressed Cheeses are those placed in a mold and firmly pressed. Yeah. There are uncooked, uncooked, fresh, uncooked okay, pressed cheese, cheeses, cheeses. Uh -huh, such, as, such as cheddar and cooked pressed cheese, such as gruyere. I know. Gruyere. I don't know. It's a French <laughs> word. I don't speak French. All right, so that's the name of the cheese. All right, go on with the uh, extra sentence that we need to fit in somewhere. Maribel, read the last, the, sen the extra sentence that is on like bold. Roquefort, for example, is a well-known blue vein cheese from France. All right, okay. So now here we have, Freddy, go on with the, this passage is about. Where? The very last paragraph, okay, because okay. that's where they're going to give you the answer. Letter D? Yeah, just read the, this passage. It's about... It's about the... It's an example of blue cheese. Yeah, what I want you to do is like I want you to read the whole explanation, Freddy. This passage is about the three main... Oh, thank you. Okay, okay. This passage, this passage is about the three main classes of cheese. Roquefort okay. is a is a well-known blue vein cheese, the second class of cheese that is discussed. discussed. The connecting <laughs> discussed. The connecting word, for example, along with the phrase blue vein cheese, link this sentence to the sentence that explains blue vein cheeses. The sentence will logically be inserted at D. All right. Okay. All right, so remember that in this case, they were giving you or they were asking from you some kind of detail. And in that one, Roquefort, for example, all right, it gives you detail, right? Or about the cheese that they're talking about, okay? So the answer would be letter D, okay? Let's go on with the last, uh, the last type of sentences that we may find. Uh, Julia, can you read this one, please? Which one, sorry? Number three, a sentence that ends that, up... Number three? Yeah. Oh, okay. A sentence that ends the paragraph, a sentence that, I, that is meant to be inserted at the end of the paragraph will either be a detail of the final supporting idea of the passage 
or will summarize the, summarize the ideas in the passage. Summarize the ideas in the passage. Reference and or transitions and connecting words will refer to previous sentence. Read the passage below and the sentences to be inserted. All right. Go on. A. Yeah, please, in yes. areas. In areas. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. Go in on. Areas of. Okay. <laughs> in areas of extreme condition, people have found functional ways to use limit. Limited resource. Limited resources. Limited, limited resources. Mm -hmm. B. A case in point is that desert dwellers. Is desert dwellers? For thousands of years, dwellers who for thousands of years have sheltered themselves in extremely functional buildings. See, these buildings are constructed of one of the most freely available, dependable, and inexpensive materials. We know of the earth. Mood, the mud, ideal mud. insulator. The ideal oh, insulator, okay. all right? Mud. Yes, what is the extra sentence? Um, Julia, can you read it? Material? This material absorbs heat during the day and slowly releases it at night. All right, so thank you. That is the extra sentence. The mm -hmm. Continue, okay. yes. The phrase, this material refers back to mold, the ideal insulator. Excellent. The rest, the rest of the sentence describes mold's ideal insulating pro properties. Properties, yes. The sentences will logically be inserted at D. Mm -hmm. Go on. Improving your ability to recognize. Mm -hmm. Sorry? No, go on, go on, go on. Improve. Okay. Improving your ability to recognize, 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 and use, recognize and use all the clues given through reference. Transition connectors and surrounding words will help you identify where a given sentence should be inserted in the passion items on the TOEFL test. All right. Okay. So, guys, the idea for us to take time to read these three types of sentences is because they can help you out a little bit more to know okay so which kind of sentences which kind of sentence am i looking for all right so one of them can be can you can we one recall of, number one what type of sentence was number one do you remember general sentence general introducing sentence. topic yeah, it intro the yeah, the in yeah, the topic sentence, introducing the topic, all right? So that could be one of the sentences that we may be looking for. What about number two? Supporting ideas, details. Yeah, right, yeah, a sentence that supports ideas, that gives you details, very good. And the last sentence, what are we looking for here? Don't look at it, we're still, it's still on the screen. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's a sentence that what? It's going to? And, and the paragraph, all right, like this one, all right? So most likely, I mean, that's why we have four choices because one is at the very beginning, which is an intro sentence. B and C could be a detail kind of sentence also if we kind of look for it in the middle. But remember that that's not like so right, like so like that. An intro sentence may not be at the very beginning, all right? Maybe on letter B, all right? So not, not only just because it's an intro sentence, it's always going to be choice A, all right? Remember that it said here, it might not be at the very beginning, all right? B and C, we expect them to be the detailed sentences, but again, it's not mm, like an obligation that it's C. All right, if you notice the last example, it was a detailed sentence, but it was the last sentence. It was the last choice. It was choice D, all right? Usually this type of sentence is the third one because it ends a paragraph, then it might be choice D, but nothing is written on stone. Remember the TOEFL test, what they want to do with you is to confuse you, all right, to see how well you speak it, how well you manage with the English language, how much you know, how much you can like 
understand what what's going on all right but i thought that this was like very important for you to know that you are looking for three, these three type of sentences do you have any questions so far guys do you have any questions about these three type of sentences that we might look for on a test no teacher Ready? Uh, yeah no uh, well, in, obviously, in the TOEFL test, we have to guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It that, that way, uh, yeah. what kind of sentence we have to select. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's I not mean, a, for example, in the instruction, we know. Which type of sentence we are looking for. Uh -huh. No. Oh, no. Yeah. That would be very nice, but no. Oh, no, they're not gonna. They're not gonna say, okay, you have to look for a topic sentence. That would be pretty much giving you the answer. All right, they just tell you the sentence at the very. And if you notice on the three examples, the extra sentence is at the very bottom. You're not gonna read it before. Most likely, you read the passage first, then you see the choices, and when you finish, then you find out the sentence. Okay, and then you have to think, okay. Is this giving me examples? Is it telling me details? Is it like the beginning of the passage? Is it closing the whole passage? What is the sentence doing? Again, it's opportunity when I say this, all right? But as I said yesterday, and I'm gonna repeat it through the whole course, when you take TOEFL test, you're being timed, okay? So you don't really have time to think about it so much. It's either A, B, C, or D, and you need to move on because I mean, time is running and it's running fast, okay? So you don't really have time to think, okay, so is this a topic sentence? Is this an end type of sentence? Or is it a detailed sentence? What is it? And then you kind of, you don't really have that time, okay? Now, the idea for us, again, is to prepare you, all right, for you to say, okay, so this is what it's going to look like. And these are the three type of sentences that most likely they are going to be giving me. All right, so what do I do with this? All right, so how, I do, how do I recognize these sentences, okay? Usually, or well, sometimes um, studying like connectors or reference help your transition words, they will help you understand it a little bit better. But again, nothing is written on stone here, all right? So it's, it's a little bit, it's not that easy, all right? I don't want to scare you for the ones that are actually going to take TOEFL, uh, but it's not easy, all right? That's why many people don't succeed taking TOEFL tests, okay? Because it's, it's actually something quite challenging. It's, it's, it's not simple. It, teacher, <laughs> it, it's like throw away the money. <laughs> not really, but yeah, I mean, and remember that it's a requirement for many jobs or for many universities for you to take it, all right? So that's why it's good, Maribel, to be taking a prep uh, course because it gives you an idea of what you may look for, all right? It's not like you're going blind, you know, like, what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't know the type of questions. I don't know the type of vocabulary. If you notice... TOEFL one already, the course for the ones that did, and now that you're taking this TOEFL two, you notice that vocabulary is not really simple. It's actually very complicated, all right? I mean, they're not telling you about how beautiful that lady is. They're telling you about birds. They're telling you about a vitamin C. They're telling you about um, just about anything. So the level of English that you need to have for this test is not basic at all, all right? That's why I always, and I'm gonna insist, like for you to take, to read, to get everything that you get can get, like your hands on with the, like English in English, because it will prepare you for this, all right? And even so, we don't know all the words, that's a lie. I mean, if someone comes to you and says, I know all the words, they are lying to you because not even in Spanish, sometimes we find words in Spanish that we have no idea what they mean. Mm -hmm. Their native language. Mm -hmm. Imagine on a second language as mm -hmm. English that is for us. So if someone says to you, no, I understand everything. Mm, I don't know, don't trust them that much, all right? Because that might not be true. But again, the idea is for you to feel a little bit more comfortable, guys, all right? When you take the TOEFL, all right? So any other question besides the question that Freddie had, Nidia or um, 
Maribel or Julia. Rob ah, hi, Roberto. All right, Saida, any other question? No. No? All right. Uh, so far, no. Okay, very good, Roberto. Thank you. All right, so here we have, um, this is a sample. Again, we already did like a, a couple of samples already, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a picture of this right now. This is going to be question one and question two. All right, of course, the answers are not there. That's your job. All right, so question one, question two, please take a picture or ask. Okay. And are we ready? No. Not yet. All right, that's okay. <laughs> Not yet. Is it raining by, by your house by any chance? Or not at all? Not at all. Oh, okay. All right. It was about to rain here, but suddenly it stopped, so. All right, finished? Yes. Okay, and this is, uh, this is question three. It's only one, I mean, that's one question, all right? It's cut out, but it's okay. It's one question, that's question three. And the very last picture is going to be question four. Okay, ready? Okay. okay, and this is question four and that's the last picture. Okay, so we only have four questions today. Again, you have the passage, you have the choices, and at the very bottom, you have the sentence that, be, that needs to be fit in somewhere, all right? So I'm gonna stop sharing this right now. Again, at the very end of the class, I'm gonna send the presentation so you have it as a reference, all right? You can always go back and check it and read it, and I encourage you to do so, all right? So we're gonna go back, uh, we're gonna go right now to your groups. Uh, read the uh, questions with your partner and then decide where the sentence might fit in, okay? And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna share uh, the answers, okay? Okay. There you go. Do you have the first? This is the first one and the second one. That's question number one and question number two. The upper one is the number one? That's right. And the bottom one is number two. Yep. Yeah, all right. So Do Julia, in this case, would you like me to go ahead and read or would you like to read the first one? Uh, I'm gonna read. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Saida. Evelyn, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Hi. I'm sorry, we're by yourself for a little while, but I moved Saida here to, to your group. Can she listen mm -hmm. to us? Saidita, can you, can you listen, Saida? Her mic is off. Well, I guess she's, she was, oh, there you go. Hello. Hi, Saida. I'm sorry I moved you, but Evelyn was by herself. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you can work with her, okay? Okay, teacher. You girls have the four, the four questions, yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. 
So you may start reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pragmatic example. Well, yeah, example about uh, different pragmatists that have in. Uh, yes. Uh huh. So I think it will be in letter A. Um, believe that the practical consequence. Yes, maybe you're right. What number are you guys working on right now? The first one. The first one. Okay. Yes. We think that is number A. That is letter A? Yeah, we think. All right. That, that's the correct. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll let you think about it a little bit more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, I think the same. Okay. Let me go ahead and read, uh, and read the second one, okay? Okay. In the early years of the 20th century, the American art scene was dominated by painters who had established their reputations in the previous century. At this time, there was a general intolerance, both by critics and by the public of any deviation from the kind of work championed by academic institutions. Acceptable art generally employed detail, uh, detailed realistic techniques and focused on subject matter of historical and mythological scenes or sentimental landscapes. In uh, 1908, or in 90, uh, in 98? 98. Mm -hmm. a group of artists, uh, sorry, a group of artists organized an exhibition in a New York gallery that constituted a revolt against these current orthodoxies. Their unconventional work often depicted the same side, sorry, the, the same side of European life in settings such as backyards, saloons, dance halls, and theaters. Surprisingly, the show was a success, and for a time, these artists employed, uh, sorry, enjoyed widespread popularity. The artists who came to be called the, the Eight and were later dubbed the Ashton School. I think that it's Ashkan school. Mm -hmm. Use vigorous brush strokes and dramatic lighting. Well, I mean, this okay. changed so far. I think that they let it be. It's the one that resumes. Why, Robert? After that. Mm -hmm. Why do you think is that choice? Because it's specifying all the things, all the important things about the type of art that they were performing at the time. Okay. Compare it to, 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 to the type of art that were currently appreciated at that time. But is it talking about the art or is it talking about the artists? Uh, well, about the artists, I think. Mm -hmm. That is talking about the artists as well. Uh, after C, I think. After C. Yes, because the C is talk about the, a group of artists. From C to D, it talks about the artist, okay? Roberto is right on the choice. The choice, the correct choice is D, but it's because he keeps on talking about the artists, not because of okay. talking about the art. It talks about the artist. If you notice, it says at the it bottom. It's before letter D. But after D, I mean, after it's on D. D. Mm -hmm. 
Their unconventional work often depicted the seamy side of urban life and setting such backyards, saloon, dance halls, and theaters. Surprisingly, the show was a success. And for a time, these artists enjoy widespread, uh, widespread popularity. The artist, it keeps on talking about the artist here, who came yeah. uh, to be called blah, 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 all right? So it's at the very end, all right? Okay. Mm, yeah. So it, would, it was, it was, it is, I mean, your choice was right, Roberto. It's just, yeah. Like yeah, because the, mm -hmm. they're keeping about their unconventional work. Of right, right. The, okay. the conventional work of the, of the artist. Of the artist, literary. right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. So that closes everything else. I mean, that, that, that extra sentence gives a closing to the whole paragraph. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Would you Maybe. Uh -huh. Larry, what? And Gabby, how are you doing? <laughs> Hello. We are trying to do the second one. All right. Okay. I think it would be letter C. <laughs> but I'm not completely sure. You are talking about the 20th century? Yes. That's the one? Yes. Okay. What does Gabby think? What do you think, Gabby? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's letter C because uh, in this part said, in 98, a group of artists organized an exhibition. Organized, organized. Sorry, thank you. Organized an exhibition in New York gallery that constitute a revolt constituted? constituted a revolt against these current orthodoxies and i think the is following the artists who came to be called the eight and were later dubbed the ashcan school used vigorous brush strokes and dramatic lighting i think is details in mm. <laughs> of this idea <laughs> because of the year i don't know yeah they mentioned that uh, these the artists uh -huh, that organized organized the all right gabby what do you think you agree with freddy yes <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so in it's this case, no. <laughs> in this case, Freddy and Gabby, but you're close, all right? <laughs> okay. In this case, the choice is letter D. All right. Okay. I want you to read with me right now. It says, let's go on from it says their unconventional work often de depicted the semi side of urban life in settings such as backyards, saloon, dance halls, and theaters. Surprisingly, the show was a success. And for a time, these artists enjoy widespread popularity, all right? The last okay. sentence is talking about who? The artist. Excellent, okay? And look how the other sentence begins, the extra sentence. The artists who came to be called the eight and were later dubbed the Asian, uh, Asian I guess, school, use vigorous brush strokes and dramatic lining all right mm, okay so it's it a keeps, complete set that's right it, it closes the whole paragraph it's the end ending sentence all right and it's because it, like if you notice you have to take it from the very last part where it says a, a time these artists enjoy blah 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 and then it gives you a little bit more information about who these artists were all right and like what how they were called so as gabriela okay. said right now it's a closing sentence it finishes the whole paragraph all right okay okay thank you sense? does it make sense or is it yes. like no <laughs> <laughs> it's slowly but surely all right i promise it happens <laughs> it happens <laughs> okay <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll let you work uh, again. I'm going to go see another group, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, number three. Yes. 
They are strong. Hello, Nidia. Hello, Maribel. How are you doing? Which question are you working on right now? Uh, we are in the second one. Okay. All right. Okay. How are you doing with that one? Nidia uh, says that is after letter C. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, and what no. are you? Letter D. D. No, D. Letter D. D. Nidia, you say it's letter D? Yes. Ah, and what does Maribel say? So it's the same after letter C. <laughs> after letter C and letter D. It's letter D. <laughs> okay, right, okay. Now, Nidia, why do you think it's no. letter D? Because in C, after C, mm -hmm. it is playing about a group of, uh, a group of artists mm -hmm. organize it. Organize And after that, they, it explains that the artists who came to be called the eight, uh, it um, amplified the, the information about right. the, this group of artists. Okay. Yep. So it gives you more oh. information about the artist, like who they yes. were, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So is is see that detail detail? So yeah. Detail. Yes, I guess you can see it that way. In the the first one. Uh huh. What about the first one? What was your choice? Um. Is I think I think the same, Nidia. C. Hi. Uh huh. So what's the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was the uh, what was the choice that you guys? The letter C. For number one, where it says pragmatism. Yes. All right. Okay. And you agree with that one, Maribel? For you, it's the same? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so I, I think I couldn't understand uh, very well the paragraph. Ah, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the answer, Nidia and Maribel, for that one is not C. Okay. Did, you, did you have any other choice for that one, or that was the one that you believed it was? I, I said. I said it was the last one D. after letter D. After mm. letter D. All no. right. No, it's actually the choice. Is I mean, it okay? The, the right answer is B. Okay. Ah, letter B. Mm -hmm. Why? Letter what? B. Read the paragraph, uh, Maribel. Start reading, please. Pragmat so I'll tell you uh -huh. why. Pragmatism, can you Pragma read? Pragmatism is essentially an American school of uh, thought that has had few supporters elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, pragmatics believe that the test of any belief should be its practical consequences, uh, and the and that the truth, the truth of a proposition propositions should be judged on how well it corresponds with 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 experimental results mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. then letter b one of the first pragmatics william james wrote that it it was impossible to discover the real world outside our senses and therefore we must we must concern ourselves primarily with human experience mm -hmm. then the letter c because the world would be like my my cell phone is a worse place without a belief in human responsibility, morals, and free will. It was, it was necessary. He considered to believe in the uh, in these concepts. All right. Mm -hmm. The another pragmatics, John John Dewey, uh -huh, held that things 
truth is an instru instrument for solving problems and it must change as the problems it confronts change. Right. So in other words, it's letter B because it gives you a little bit of detail of what's going on about what pragmatism believe, what pragmatics or what they believe on. All right. So it makes, uh -huh. it, that's why it fits in there because then it says one of the first pragmatists and then it goes on. All right. So, but before it gives you the example of the first pragmatist, uh, that is William James, it tells you what they believe. All right, so that's why the answer mm -hmm. would be letter B. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a oh, so it's a topic. General no, I would take it more as a detail. No. I would take it more as mm -hmm. a detail, Maribel, more than a, a more than a topic sentence. Mm -hmm. The topic sentence is letter A itself. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. You only were able to do one and two, right, Nidia and, and Maribel? Yes, yes. Right. yes. Okay. Yeah, most, most of the groups only did two. All right, that's okay. I'm going to send the presentation okay. anyway, all right, so you can continue working on it if you, like, have the time to do so. So it's, it's for you to have it, all right? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank all you. Right. We're going to go back right now because I have another class, like, right now. So we need to, like, finish up. Okay. All right, guys, I don't know if you were able to finish all the questions from one to uh, from one through four. Were you able to finish everything? Yes. Yeah. All right. OK. I know that um, Maribel and Nidia weren't. What about Freddy and Gabriela? Were you able to finish everything? Yes. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. I guess I mean, most of you guys barely finished it, but that's OK. All right. So uh, I'm just going to give you the answers right now. I'm gonna send to you the presentation anyway. So with the answer already given to you, try to analyze why would that be the uh, right choice, all right? That's the idea behind it. For number one, uh, we have, a, for number one, the choice is letter B, all right, B as in baby, all right? For number two, the choice would be letter D, all right? For number three is letter C, as well, Number four is letter C. All right, oh. so we have B, D, C, C. All right, that would be the, those would be the answers. All right. Now again, guys, um, I know this is not easy to do, especially not in an hour. All right, but the idea is for you to practice a little bit more, and that's why I send the presentations to you, just in case. I mean, you have extra time, or in the future you can always like keep it with you, and then you can always look it up. All right. So thank you so much, guys, for being with me tonight. Remember, tomorrow we have no class. Tomorrow's Friday. We only have classes from Monday through Thursday. So I'll see you Monday again with the listening section, okay? Try to uh, finish the first okay. on over the weekend, okay? And try to do everything. If you need help, let me know, all right? We, I, I am in the WhatsApp group. You know that. So just let me know, and I'll help you, all right? So have a great thank you. Time. And thank you. Please keep safe. Wash your hands if you have to go out, and if you don't have to, don't go out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Have a nice weekend. You too.